get started so uh, let's have, if anyone can leave in prayer that would be nice uh, are we able to hear the online students is it connected even online students can speak right okay thank you maybe some uh, someone from our online batch if you can please lead in prayer that will be great Okay, who would like to pray this morning? Okay. Uh, yes, Prince, please go ahead. By mistake. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm not sure what time it is from where you all are connecting, so don't to, uh, you know make it convenient. So all right, maybe somebody here in the batch. Can we have someone pray quickly, please, so we can get into the class? Jesus, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, um, that you have brought us all together again, and thank you, Lord, for this. Great day, and I pray the Father God that we would um, learn something today from uh, Pastor De Nancy, and that um, thank you, Jesus, that it's going to impact us, impact our lives, and that uh, it will become a lifestyle. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. In your name, pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you for leading in prayer. Today we will continue with uh, the theme of intercession. We've been talking about pray for others. We saw how that is a very blessed ministry. Some are called with the grace to intercede. Okay, very specifically called, um, you know, with that kind of uh, a role in the kingdom of God. Uh, and definitely, you know, it's not a secondary role. God views that ministry as a very precious one. So the last uh, uh, class we more about declaring prayers of declaration over our family members, over our home. Uh, we also talked about praying for those who have wandered away from uh, the Lord and uh, the importance of the influence that we have you know, as family members and how we must utilize it by praying for those we love. So today we will continue to look at praying for others. And uh, here are certain points that we recognize that we can pray for believers and our local church. We can also pray for uh, the people who minister to us. So pastors, leaders, um, those who are serving the Lord, right? So we can pray for such people as well. So we're at chapter 15. And um, it begins with Ephesians 6, 18 and 19, where we know that Paul called us to pray for all the saints. So all the saints are who? All the saints. Primarily that term saints is sinners who have now been cleansed, who are now sons and daughters of God, who are part of the kingdom. So saints applies to every believer. So saints doesn't mean... You know, we are praying for uh, some saint, so and so. You know, the way uh, people perceive that word saint to be. But saint is every believer, a sinner who is saved by grace. So we have to pray for all the saints, which means pray for believers. So we will today talk about how we can pray for the believers. Now, when we see the incident when you know jesus was talking to peter and he revealed to him you know even the um the mistake that peter is going to make he still says that i have prayed for you peter satan has uh, desired to stew as but jesus says, i have prayed for you so there's a 
practice that we see uh, in the life of Jesus, in the apostles' ministries, because even later on, as you read the epistles of Paul, usually, right, it begins with, uh, I'm praying for you, or it closes with, I'm praying for you. So praying for those who are in the body of believers is something that we have to do, we need to pray for each other. So what are some prayers that we can pray for believers? We definitely want to pray for believers. Uh, we want to pray for them. One is because we have the authority, we can pray. Uh, second is maybe there are times you know, when they are going through challenging situations. We've seen the life of Job when he also desired and said, oh, I wish somebody may pray for me. Uh, maybe those challenging times are such that they are not able to pray for themselves. Right? And therefore, when we stand the gap, we are able to see the power of the kingdom released to their life. So it is that important. So that is why we used like stand in the gap, stand between God and but one thing we have to be aware of is we should never become the ultimate mediator, which that mistake happens, you know. But when you consider intercessory ministry, what we do is we tell people. I will pray. Okay. And somehow the importance is on us reaching out to God. And people also start believing that. Okay. Let this pastor pray. Or let this man of God pray. Let this woman of God pray. But that is not the only way in which you know we should um, do our intercessory ministry. Otherwise, people start depending on us. Okay. However, we must pray. Okay? And we must also encourage people to pray. One best way to do that is to also teach them how to pray. Okay, So don't become um, a crutch for people. Okay? You understand? Uh, we should not become a crutch for people. Our ultimate goal is that everyone should know how to pray for themselves. Everyone should know how to um, you know, receive for their needs, maybe healing. Yes, we can minister to people, but eventually they themselves should know how I can get my own healing. So intercessory ministry is not a ministry by which we must make people dependent on us. That's not the goal. But we can be mediators when there's a need. Okay, you understand? So when we are praying for sinners to come back to God, yes, God needs an intercessor. When we are praying for healing, God needs intercessors to you know, stay on course and pray. Uh, when we have believers who have wandered away, you know, these are all situations where somehow there is a need for perseverance or the fulfillment of God's promise over someone's life. You know, perseverance is required in prayer. So that's where we come in and we can stand in the gap and we can pray for people. But also recall that the ultimate mediator, you know, the person who's known as a mediator is who? Jesus Christ. Okay. So you and I, we can never mediate the way Jesus mediated. Our mediation is only by using our authority through prayer okay that is the kind of mediation or um, intercession which we are performing so we must understand that okay moving on we know that we can pray for believers when there are various needs what else can we pray for the believers so there is a list of prayers which Apostle Paul prayed for the believers. And in those prayers, he prayed for different things, but mainly you find that the emphasis is 
for the believers to be strong in their spiritual walk for the believers to um stay focused you know to fulfill their purpose for their lives the prayers were more for you know the believers to become like christ so a lot of spiritual you see spiritual strength uh, spiritual growing up that was the focus that paul had so there is an entire list here in our notes so if you can go to page 65 you see there paul's prayers for the believers so i won't read through each of the verses but i'll just highlight the key points that paul prayed for so he mainly prayed that the believers will not fall into evil and deception okay any confusion it's a different page number for you okay maybe they have edited oh 61 okay so the printed copies please look at page 61 you're at it now you've turned it okay so um the key points that they should not fall into evil and deception that they should become more like jesus i already said that christ should be formed in them so these are the prayers which paul is praying and what kind of a person is paul you know he's in the ministry he is um planting churches he is is in up leaders he's overseeing churches so you you see the focus which paul has he wants believers to stay on course so his prayers are directed towards that he wants believers to become mature in god so his his prayers are directed towards that that they should become more like jesus so that christ may be formed in you okay so ultimately that spiritual maturity and growth is the key thing that paul is praying for some of the other things he asks for the believers is that god would give them revelation knowledge revelation knowledge simply means word of god is available to us but the spirit man will begin to receive understanding of the word okay and that understanding it will enlighten the spiritual man and not just that we will also be able to apply it okay so that is paul's desire yeah you're all hearing the word of god but i pray that you may have revelation knowledge or proper enlightenment from the word of god such was the prayer of paul so he prayed that believers may have revelation knowledge i think we read that passage last week isn't it ephesians 1 when we prayed for family members also so similarly there are other passages such as philippians 3 um philippians 1 and uh, colossians 1 which one say about first asking for believers to have understanding revelation knowledge for believers to um you know walk with the lord in a worthy manner asking for believers to be fruitful in their lives because god has called each one of us to do our part and god wants us to be fruitful so these are the kind of prayers that he's praying he's praying for uh, spiritual strength okay so we too can pick up these prayers and pray colossians 4 is another beautiful prayer where he prays that the believers may be perfect and complete in christ okay perfect is not to say that you know one is um, one doesn't make any mistakes or there are no errors that's not the meaning of that word perfect okay but perfect is to um, to denote maturity that believers will become mature so uh, such prayers he prayed he also prayed that the faith of the believers would become perfect again we understand uh, maturing of faith is what he wanted to see among the believers so uh, today 
you know we as people who love the body of christ we too can pray such prayers we can pray such prayers over our congregations our um, other believers uh, but i think this, these prayers can be very powerful if pastors leaders you know those who are overseers of congregations they pray over it again because there is an influence you know that god gives we will see later there are um, spheres of influence okay spheres of influence where you have authority figures so for example in the family um, parents and children parents are the authority over the children in uh, in a church you have a pastor you have ministry leaders they would be the authority over the people whom they lead uh, in an office setting you have a boss who would be the authority over the employees so god grants that authority okay he is the one who first of all gives authority but from that authority there is an influence which we can exercise so that's why i'm saying if these prayers you now we generally all of us can pray but if pastors leaders overseers we pray it over our people uh, it it comes with that kind of an influence right so we bless our people same way the way we discussed last time the parents can uh, speak blessing or they can speak curses on their children both carry influence in the same way leaders spiritual leaders and you pray such prayers it is going to be very powerful over the people so paul prayed such prayers for people's spiritual maturity okay now a few more things which are covered here in the chapter are that um, there were prayers which were encouraged for individuals so there are times we are not reading through each of the verses you can you know take time and maybe go over those verses by yourself uh, but all the verses are given over there he prayed for timothy um, you see that you know there is a place where he prays for philemon yeah, so there are individuals that he's praying for even today maybe you are sitting here um, and god has put burden on your heart to pray for another believer that believer might be from your local church or you know they might be somebody you met some place but you're seeing that okay uh, god is calling me to pray for such and such a believer even you can pray for those individuals okay uh, and commit to pray for them so paul also prayed for certain individuals jesus remember jesus told peter i have prayed for you so we can pray at large but we can also pray specifically for individuals and uh, at the end of this chapter we notice that uh, you know paul he has an incredible burden for the churches we know that during his missionary journeys he may have planted about 20 churches okay now after planting the churches he could have just said i have planted the churches it's great you know we've done a great job and finished that but the kind of heart which god gave him you know, we look at it as a very pastoral kind of heart a very apostolic kind of a heart okay by which we mean that he carried a concern for those people once he planted the churches he still thought about them he used to get news about these churches you know the church in colosse the church uh, in uh, rome the uh, you know uh, he obviously he spent time with the ephesian believers and you know when you read in the book of acts he went to say bye right before he was moving to uh, jerusalem he knew that he may never come back and see the love which he has that you know they hug each other and he gives them instructions he tells them he wants them how to take care of god's people okay so that kind of uh, a burden he carried for those people like really you can say that there was that love 
which he had for the believers, which he had for the leaders. So uh, he writes in the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 28 to 29. He says, uh, maybe somebody can uh, read it. 2 Corinthians 11, 28 and 29. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you notice here, he's saying that what comes upon me, how often? How often does it say? Daily. So there is a deep concern which he carries daily. And he says, my deep concern for all the churches. Deep concern for all the churches. Verse 29, it just shows us that he felt for the churches, meaning he empathized with the churches. Okay, uh, So he says, who is weak and I'm not weak? So Paul is saying, there are believers and leaders and congregations. If they are going through weakness, I feel the weakness. So do you see that? He has a very genuine love for the people. He's saying, if they are weak, I am weak. Concern for all the churches daily. You know, that kind of a love and concern he's carrying for the churches. No wonder, you know, it is possible to um, pray perseverance. If we don't have that kind of a genuine burden, I'm not saying that our prayers will not be effective, but I'm saying... You know, carrying that burden to see the fulfillment of those prayers or those promises, um, it may not last. Okay, But the place from where Paul is actually praying is this place. Genuine care, genuine concern, love for the believers. And that's why he says, who is weak and I am not weak. I feel the weakness that is there in the churches. He also says, who is made to stumble and I do not burn with indignation. So he's saying, even when I hear that he has gone away from the Lord, he's angry. And you wonder, why is it that Paul is rebuking, you know, people over here, over there? Why, you know, do it right. Give glory to God. Don't you know you're the temple of the Holy Spirit? All these instructions. Paul, why are you writing epistles? Because his ministry is about establishing the believers in the truth of God's word, ensuring that the believers become spiritually mature, that their faith will become mature. Right? So that is why the whole teaching, the encouraging, the prayer, everything is going into that. So today, when we think about praying for believers, why should we pray for believers? Just ask the Lord, Lord, give me a genuine concern. Okay. So when we have a genuine concern, that's when we can pray like this and say, God, we want to see believers established in the faith. Okay. So that is how Paul prayed with a deep concern. And even, you know, when people stumbled, he was angry. He just saw. Okay. Uh, now, Praying for believers, yes, we understand. Now, would it be wrong for ministers of God to say, um, pray for me? It's not wrong for ministers of God to ask for prayer. Okay. Uh, so we see you know, some places where Paul actually asks for prayer. Ephesians 6 verse uh, 19. You know, he says, and for me, he begins with pray for all the saints. And then in verse 19, he says, pray for me that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. So, you know, prayers like this, we can pray for uh, preachers, pastors, that God, 
give them the words, give them the boldness. See, Paul is asking for prayer and he's saying, please pray that I will get the words to speak and the boldness you know, to be a witness. So in the same way, uh, you know, we can also pray for ministers of God. One more prayer which um, you know, I, I will um, share here is from Romans. Uh, verse chapter 15, verse 30, where he says, I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in prayers to God for me. And he continues, verse 31, that I may be delivered from those in Judea who do not believe, and that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints, that I may come to you with joy by the will of God and may be refreshed together with you. So many different things. Basically, he's saying, pray for protection. When I do ministry, you know, there's a lot of opposition that I face. So just pray that I will be protected. I will be preserved. Uh, he's saying, pray for favor. When I do the ministry, let the people be accepting of my ministry. Let them, um, you know, be open to what I have to say and share. Uh, he's also saying, please pray that uh, we will have the opportunity to meet. Okay, that we can meet and be refreshed by one another's fellowship. So these are the kind of prayers which Paul is asking for. So it's okay for us to actually. Uh, pray for ministers of God and also if ministers of God ask and say, you know, pray for me. There's nothing wrong in that. Okay, So I've tried to be somewhat quick to touch on just the key points. Any questions, any thoughts? Yes, Anand. Yeah. Uh, can you please use the mic? Because, you know, in the recording, you it, there's like a pause. So it's best to use the uh, yeah. You said about uh, the believers, we have yeah. to teach us uh, to be healed by themselves. We have to teach how to pray. Right. So uh, most of the times we'll see in the normal world or normal churches. So uh, people used to pray for months and months, years and years, and they'll not be healed or, and they will not be delivered from their problems. When they go to a particular pastor or particular preacher, they will be healed or they got uh, uh, comforted uh, at that time only. So how can we see this? Uh, is it a, a authority that have by the preacher, or is there anything uh, what makes the difference from praying? Okay. To the sure. Yeah. So what Anand is saying is, um, though we can, I mean, in general, we see that there are people who minister healing, particularly healing. Uh, but you know, I mentioned that it's possible for us to equip the believers to walk in healing. Okay, they can receive their own healing. So, um, how does this work? Is is what you're asking? Yeah, how does this work? Okay. So, see, when we look at um, the Word of God, we know that uh, the atonement or what Jesus has done on the cross, right? He became that perfect Lamb who was sacrificed. He paid for you know our sins. Um, and uh, so the punishment which was due us was taken uh, away from us and the blessings of God were directed towards us. So, you know, we understand all that, like Galatians 3, 13, 14 says that Jesus became a curse for us, that the blessings of Abraham may come upon us. So it has already been done and uh, the blessings of the cross have already been provided. Okay. Uh, now. The way it is released is through faith. Uh, and even when ministers of God, you know, go and minister, maybe, you know, uh, people pray for others, um, through their faith, healings happen. Okay. So uh, the, the person who's ministering, I mean, uh, and also we know the value of the faith of the person who believes, which is why we teach the word. You know, we teach the word, we um, talk to them about who Jesus is and all. Then what happens? Faith comes in people's hearts. And that's when generally you would see that, you know, we'll talk about Jesus, we'll share from the word, and then people begin to believe. And then we pray, they receive their healing. Okay. Now, all this is fine. All this is fine. But 
you know if the people don't know that healing is in the atonement if they don't know you know god's word on healing god's will on healing what happens is once the preacher goes away or the minister goes away they will wait for the next meeting or they will wait for the next person of god to come and pray for them okay but what is the fact i just said it's already been provided in the cross so believer must be made aware so that's where teaching them comes into picture so we teach them about the cross and the thing is yeah. uh, uh, sorry for disturbing uh, the thing is when they are praying uh, since uh, from months and months and years and years they will not get healed by themselves they will not? not get healed by themselves when we practically also the things uh, happening is the same so they will not heal by themselves when they are praying since uh, months and months but when they went to a particular preacher or uh, pastor so they got healed in we saw so many incidents uh, like mm -hmm. lively ones i have also saw so uh, what makes a difference i mean is there, is there a particular authority for the pastors we but we say we every gifts of spirit are same for everyone mm -hmm. but is there a particular authority for them uh, that's why uh, some of the preachers and pastors are in uh, are in nowadays very big so by their healing or the things so mm. uh, what makes a difference praying by themselves and going yeah on? so see anand what i'm saying is i'm saying that the word of god reveals that every believer has access to healing okay now the fact that um you know we depend on as you said preachers and their special authority or whatever uh many times it's because the believers are unaware that they themselves can receive it okay so as romans 10:17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god faith will come to them if they know you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free you know the bible says so we can equip the believers as a norm to walk in divine healing all the time okay it is possible if we teach the word if we teach the truth of god's word people can have the faith they need to receive their own healing however somewhere you know we in the christian um circle we have seen that we we have uh you know we have verified healings through this method what you're saying you know somebody some preacher going and using their faith their authority uh yes there is a special grace given to you know that person because of the anointing which they carry but what i am saying is that is occasional that should not be the only way through which believers should receive their healing because uh i mean it, it's like a bonus hmm yeah so that's what i'm saying it's it's about uh, the knowledge right my my people perish for lack of knowledge that's what scripture says in the old testament there's nothing wrong if a preacher prays and they get healed i would say that's like the starting point they understand that healing is in the covenant okay uh, but in the long term it is good for us to equip the believers to walk in their own Uh, divine healing and it is possible if you teach them they can but thank god for uh, men and women of god and the anointing over their lives and also one more thing is um, you know when they minister they minister by faith the authority which they carry by the anointing um, and also we have the operation of the gifts of the spirit okay so sometimes what happens or most times what happens is uh, when you have all these meetings right ministers of god operate through the gifts of the spirit 
So there's something known as gifts of healings, okay, miracles. So when one is ministering in that anointing, it takes place. Like people just get healed. They just get. But what's happening? These are all things that uh, people probably don't know. But when you when they learn the word, they can also grow in their faith, right? And uh, if they use their faith, the best way is to teach people to walk in constant divine healing. And that is possible when people know the word and they know how to apply it. Okay. So you got my point, right? Yeah. Great. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so if they get healed, it's a good thing, right? That they still believe in, um, you know, God and the way the healing happened, right? Uh, well, Okay, so you're talking about a situation where uh, if somebody has believed God but never got the healing, but got it through a pastor's ministry, they will think that they don't have, you know, the kind of faith which they need. No, but we should teach them, no, that that's not true. We have to teach them that, uh, uh, you know, believers have authority and their faith can also work. See, it does work like that sometimes, but it doesn't mean that their faith is not effective. Okay. So you tell me, somebody has prayed for, I'm just giving a situation, let's say three months. Faithfully they've prayed, they've meditated in the word, all that. They go and somebody prays for them, a pastor prays for them, they're healed. Now tell me, on the basis of what did they get healed? Was it the pastor's prayer or was it their prayer for three months? Their prayer, okay. One person saying their prayer. Both, okay, one person saying both. Yeah, Sean. Okay, so uh, Sean is saying depends on that moment. It okay? depends on that moment. So you know what? Frankly, we'll never know the answer to that question because we are not God, right? Who is to who is to test whose faith and say how strong it is or how weak it is? We can never tell. So the point I'm making is what we know from the word. Let's do it. We know that. You know, pastor will carry authority, anointing, gifts of the spirit, all that. Wonderful. Normally, a believer should, you know, put their faith in the word. And all these things will operate even in the believer's life. So by faith, one can receive the healing. So just keep doing these things. When it comes, how it comes, because of what it comes. You know, these are all uh, questions we don't have answers for. We can never tell. Nobody can ever tell. You know, did he get healed because of the operation of the gifts of the he of healings, or was it was it the you know flow of the anointing uh, which was present in that place because he touched the hem of the pastor's garment? We don't know, and we will never know. So don't you know, worry too much about it. That's all. He got his healing. No, that's all. <laughs> so that's all we want. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I'm saying educate the educate the believer. If you educate the believer, he won't 
get into see basically we are asking the wrong question you no know, who whose faith healed me that's not the question the i mean uh, if you genuinely are asking i understand but uh more importantly god healed me and healing is in the cross praise the lord finished instead of believer thinking oh it was pastor's faith so sad i'm not going to pray ever i'll only go to pastor every time okay fine so uh, vimal is adding uh, faith is not important but who you your faith is in is more important okay fine is yes, shon you want to say something sorry you say it i am mm if they say okay john's question is somebody comes they ask for prayer um and they tell not to pray okay so you're saying that uh, we pray for these people but they themselves don't pray for their children it will work shon okay see prayer will work now like the norm is it will work but when parents pray for their children there is a greater influence is what i said so our prayers like outsiders our prayers will also work um and uh, we can encourage them to pray for their children yeah sure okay great anything okay so see the point is we are talking about praying for believers all i'm saying is let us pray let us um you know go by the kind of prayers which paul prayed and other prayers in the bible but wherever possible teach the believers to also pray for themselves don't make them dependent on us that was my bottom line you know otherwise what happens when they think oh you are an intercessor they will never pray they will run behind you because for them it's easy you do the praying you do the fasting okay pastor just lay hands on me finished but that's not what the bible says each one they have a covenant with god and we have to teach them if we don't teach them they will be 100% dependent on us that is not the way intercessory ministry works okay you all got what we are saying right so it's a blessed ministry let us pray for believers but don't make them dependent that's all all right great so that is uh, about this chapter okay so we will move on to the next chapter which is interceding for the lost let's take a break it's uh, 9:48 but yeah let's take a break we'll come back at uh, okay 10:00 let's come back at 10:00 and then we will get into the next chapter